Hi, it's Katrina. From alien sarcophagi to an ancient Egyptian light bulb, here are 10 mysterious things found in Egypt that no one can explain. Number 10. Mystery Heads Finding disembodied heads underground in an ancient Egyptian tomb sounds like something from a horror movie. But don't worry, they're not real heads. As for what they're doing there, the jury's still out. The heads are a bit of a mystery to this day. The first examples were discovered in 1894, and since then, over 30 have been located. They were nicknamed reserve heads because, well, they looked like a bunch of spare heads. One theory is that they were used to replace a noggin if a tomb was broken into and plundered. Some of them appear to have been deliberately damaged. At first, archaeologists were puzzled by the missing ears and long scratches, but it's thought that these are signs that they're old production molds. Seems the Egyptians like to make heads in bulk, just in case. Pretty weird, huh? Number 9. The Giza Void It's amazing how even the oldest landmarks can still surprise you. In 2017, experts were very surprised when examining the legendary Great Pyramid of Giza on the west bank of the Nile. As you may know, but just in case you don't, this ancient wonder of the world was built for Pharaoh Khufu and is the largest one of three. It's about 4,500 years old and 146.7 meters high. Now, scientists knew that there were things inside the pyramids. Rooms and burial chambers have been located, but nothing had been noticed in the Great Pyramid for well over a century. That all changed when an undiscovered space cropped up during an inspection. The inspection was performed from outside the pyramid using what's called muon radiography, combined with thermal imaging. The new room is over 30 meters long and was spotted above a corridor inside the structure known as the Grand Gallery. It's been referred to as a void, and it's unclear what it is exactly. Experts are banking on robots to get in there with cameras, but these are still being built. So stay tuned, I'm sure we will be hearing something about it soon. Number 8. Kites Mysterious lines in the Egyptian deserts have been seen from the air for around a century. Everyone was wondering what they were. It turns out they're made up of little stone walls, not very high at all, in a kite-style formation. Some of them are as long as 40 miles. Even more mysterious was the fact that they lead toward a pit in the sand. As you can imagine, the sightings were the subject of much speculation. At first, people thought they might be evidence of an alien civilization, or evidence of the Egyptians trying to communicate with someone in the sky. However, by focusing on 16 of these kites in the Sinai Desert in Egypt, experts believe they have the clearest explanation yet of what the lines might be. And it's pretty grim, to be honest. The 2,000-year-old walls were studied by a team from Ben Gurion University in Israel. They concluded the kites were used for hunting, corralling animals such as gazelle and ibexes. The kites guided the unfortunate creatures toward the pit where they would be slaughtered. History is cruel and very efficient. And now for number 7. But first, be sure to subscribe and make sure that your notification bell is on so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Number 7. King Tut's Mummy one of the great mysteries of ancient Egypt is the circumstances surrounding the death of Tutankhamun. Howard Carter found his legendary tomb in 1922 and made him a historical superstar. What's maybe not as well known is that King Tut died very young, while in his teens. As ever with archaeology, experts have to wait for technology to catch up before they can make a judgment. The body has been through x-rays in the 1960s and a CT scan earlier this century. Through this analysis, certain facts are known about Tut's demise, such as missing bones and former injuries, yet a definitive explanation as to how he died remains a secret. This year, British researchers took a fresh look at the king's remains and came to a startling conclusion. According to them, the body showed possible signs of being burned. This was down to a ceremonial layer of resin and oil that was poured onto Tut as part of preparations for the next world. This process is highly flammable, and apparently Tut had caught fire inside the sarcophagus. The announcement has been criticized in some quarters, with some arguing that if a fire had happened, there would be more evidence of it. Generally, people believe the young ruler suffered a fatal trauma, said to be caused by anything from a chariot crash to a rampaging hippo. One thing we do know about his death, it certainly wasn't boring. Number 6. Black Boxes If you thought the Great Pyramid of Giza sounded mysterious, wait till you hear about what was found in Memphis. In a cave network 12 miles away from Giza, 
24 big black boxes were found. They weigh 100 tons each and are so unusual that some believe them to be alien artifacts. That's probably a little far-fetched, so let's look at the actual evidence. The caves are part of a sacred temple that was located by French archaeologist Auguste Mariette in 1850. The name for this site is the Serapium of Saqqara, or Burial Ground, and it's over 3,000 years old. It was built on the orders of Pharaoh Ramses II. The first part of the name Serapium refers to Serapis, the deity. Serapis was often depicted as a man with a dog, but this dog was no ordinary canine because it had three heads. It's more likely that instead of being left behind by ETs, the black boxes are sarcophagi. But what's inside them? The answer you'll be surprised to hear is a load of old bull. Quite literally. You see, animals were worshipped in ancient Egypt, so it's thought that the boxes contain the remains of mummified Apis bulls. It's all starting to make sense. Number 5. The Lost Labyrinth in the vicinity of the middle Egyptian city of Fayum, 100 kilometers southwest of Cairo, there is an area known as Fayum Oasis. Supposedly, there lies what's left of one of the most immense and talked about structures of ancient Egypt, the mysterious Lost Labyrinth. I say supposedly because up to now it hasn't been proved. Fayum used to be called by another name, Crocodileopolis, which came from the Greeks. And in case you're wondering, yes, that does have something to do with crocodiles. In fact, a crocodile was regularly worshipped there, but that's for another video. The labyrinth has been described by ancient writers such as Herodotus, who talked about a huge temple-like structure with a stone slab roof. Inside were 3,000 chambers, 3,000, half of which were above ground and half below. The underground chambers were reportedly accessed via a pyramid, but Herodotus didn't go down there. It's thought to have been a tribute to a group called the Twelve Kings. The description of 12 courts seems to back this up. The labyrinth is categorized as lost, but many believe it was found in the 19th century. In 1889, a stone plateau was discovered in the Fayum Oasis. Some reckon it's the foundations of the labyrinth, whereas others think it's the roof. When this stone was scanned in later years, there appeared to be a labyrinth-type network below. So this is the labyrinth, right? Could be. Thing is, authorities are preventing any further exploration, fueling enough intrigue for a whole pharaoh's dynasty. The truth is out there. Or down there. Number 4. That's a wrap. Though people don't know a lot about ancient Egypt, there are certain things everybody knows about, hopefully. Egypt is famous for its pyramids and also the mummies. Examples have been found of mummies that don't look the way you'd expect. Take this one in the Louvre Museum in Paris. It's an exhibit in the long-established Department of Egyptian Antiquities, which is made up of an impressive 30 rooms showcasing all manner of finds. Believed to be male and middle class, the figure apparently dates from 305 BC to 30 BC, otherwise known as the Ptolemaic period. Check out the head. It's wrapped in a geometric square pattern, which is not what you expect from a mummy. He makes the others look kind of boring by comparison, right? He also has an apron around his legs and a religious casing on his feet. We owe modern interest in Egyptology to an unlikely source, Napoleon. His campaign in Egypt during the late 18th century brought in experts to examine the relics of the past, sparking something called Egyptomania. This led to major displays like the one we see in the Louvre, and of course the British Museum. Another great example is the Liber Lintius in the Archaeological Museum of Zagreb, Croatia. Liber Lintius translates as linen book and refers to the wrappings which were rather unceremoniously removed when the mummy was bought as a kind of talking point for visitors. In the Victorian era, you could purchase mummies from who knows where and have unwrapping parties. So in this case, a man bought a mummy and put her in the corner of his sitting room. That'll put dinner guests off their food right there. The wrapping wasn't properly studied until years later, when it was found to contain words from the ancient Etruscan language. Eventually, it was discovered to be a book of rituals, though why it was being recycled as mummy wrap is still unknown. Number 3. The Dendera Light While we believe the light bulb is a relatively modern invention, some commentators would dispute this. In fact, they'd go so far as to say the ancient Egyptians had access to a power source that gave them things like electric light way before it was officially invented. The thinking behind this lies in the Dendera Light, a stone relief found at the Temple of Hathor. The temple is part of a complex in Dendera, a small town on the west bank of the Nile. If you look at the Dendera Light, you'll see a couple of Egyptian men and what looks like a giant baseball bat with a snake inside it. 
This is not a baseball bat, but according to some, it looks like a modern-day lamp. Some basic research shows that this isn't what it appears to be. The official explanation is that this depicts the rising sun. The lamp is actually a lotus flower, and the snake is Semaitaui, who was a snake god. Semaitaui is supposed to represent the sun. As for the bulb, or bat shape, this is probably intended to be what's called the womb of Nut. Nut was a sky goddess, so if you put these elements together, it seems less and less likely we're checking out a source of electricity here. Having said that, no one knows for sure what it is, and it could mean something else entirely. Maybe this is an ancient Egyptian baseball game with them coming up with a sport we know and love thousands of years later. I mean, it does still kind of look like a bat. Number two, the exploding pyramid. So I just mentioned a possible power supply in ancient Egypt, but what if I told you about another theory on this subject that takes place on a much bigger scale? It all revolves around the classic image we associate with the time, a pyramid. The Egyptians are famous for their pyramids, but so are many other cultures from around the world, especially in Central and South America. It seems to be a common human experience, unless you talk to someone wearing a tinfoil hat. For some people, it's a bit of a coincidence that advanced ancient civilizations would use the same design. Many have seized on this to mean that all the pyramids had a higher purpose, namely conducting a vast energy and using it for, well, who knows what. Powering an electric light, I guess. I mean, I have no idea. An example that shows maybe there was an overload of sorts is the ruined or lost pyramid at Abu Rawash in Egypt. It appears that 12,000 years ago, the Abu Rawash pyramid stood at over 213 meters, making it taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza. That's if you believe it was actually finished. Archaeologists think they just never completed the work, whereas others see it as the scene of devastation following an explosion. Some people propose that this pyramid was conducting energy, but it got a bit out of control and exploded. It's a timely reminder to always check the amps before you plug in those lamps. Number 1. The Building of the Pyramids I know, we've talked a lot about pyramids, but this is a video about ancient Egypt. I mean, what'd you expect? After many, many years, the question still is, how did the pyramids get built in the first place? The construction of these mighty structures is a matter of ongoing debate between pros and amateurs alike. They're made of enormous blocks of stone. How did the Egyptians move them? And more importantly, how did they manage to lift them to form the pyramid shape in the first place? Part of the puzzle may have been solved by a physics team based at the University of Amsterdam in 2014. The experts think an old painting from around 1900 BC holds the answer, appearing to show the desert sand getting wetted down before objects are dragged along on a sledge by nearly 200 men. Told you those stones were heavy. Wet sand naturally brings down friction, making pyramid building a snap. Well, not a snap exactly. The thing that would snap is your back if you tried to lift one of those stones. But it could explain how they were able to work on these ancient wonders. Thanks for watching! Were you surprised by any of these? Let us all know in the comments! Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon! Bye!